Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. Taking a look at a 2023 NFL mock draft for the Atlanta Falcons. Again, I love making these videos because it gives me an opportunity to talk with some of the NFL fans of different teams, talking about position fits, talking about different positional values and what your teams want to do in the offseason. Again, I kind of specialize more in the evaluation of these college prospects that are going into the NFL draft and then talking with you guys in the comment section about what you want your teams to do. It's truly a blast for me. I love making these videos. And again, if you do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. That's the best way you can support the boys. And we really do appreciate all the support you guys have shown. Without further ado, let's fire this one up. Atlanta picking at number eight. We're going to slow this down a tad bit here. There's a lot of different ways they could go with this. And I don't hate a trade down if there are quarterbacks that are still on the board where the Panthers might want to jump up or the commanders want to come up. We're not going to make a trade at this. Uh, it's kind of early to start making trades, so we're just going to pick in their natural spots unless we do get a really, really nice offer. At pick eight, and this is a this is a really interesting pick, and I, I still don't get why PFF is so low on my guy, Miles Murphy. He was a top five prospect, then he moved on to a top 10 prospect, and now he's sitting at 19. Still a top 10 guy on my board. And what's so good about Miles Murphy is that he provides for Atlanta what they need most on defense. He I, he is a phenomenal defender of the run. He takes on blocks extremely well. He sheds blocks extremely well and plays with phenomenal leverage. Do I think there can be improvements made in the pass rush? I absolutely do. But this is a guy that's 6'5", 275 pounds, has a phenomenal get-off, can win with speed around tackles, can win with power right through tackles. People talk about Tyree Wilson like he's some sort of physical freak and that Miles Murphy is more of like an average Joe. Miles Murphy was a top 10 player coming out of high school, and he's going to test phenomenally well, and I feel like people kind of forget that. You take a look at 2021 film of Miles Murphy. He was a dog, unblockable at times. The 2022 film wasn't as good as you really wanted it to be, which is probably why he's falling down boards. But Miles Murphy's ceiling – is very high in the NFL, but what's more important is his floor is very high. He's going to come in for Atlanta, be very, very good for them, and give Atlanta what they need most, which is some pass rush help and then also being a hammer in the run game. Honestly, I think him and Arnold Abiketti, your defensive line is starting to look a lot better, and I loved Arnold Abiketti last year. I thought it was a phenomenal pick by the Falcons, and, and you're looking really strong on the defensive line with Miles Murphy, Arnold Abiketti, and kind of a young crew. Pick 44, I think he could look wide receiver here. And there's a couple different spots you could go. I mean, Nathaniel Tank Dell has been a, a guy that's been falling. Josh Downs has been a guy that has fallen. I really do like the Jalen Hyatt pick, and I, I like how he fits into that Atlanta offense. You have Drake London, who I, I hand up probably just was straight up wrong. I didn't love him coming out last year in 2022. I, Atlanta doesn't try to pass the ball enough, in my opinion. And I think that was a product of they just didn't have the playmakers at wide receiver. I mean, Drake London was easily the best pass catcher on the team once Kyle Pitts went down. And you're relying and putting a lot of stock on a rookie. I think if you add another elite pass catcher into this offense, I, I think you're going to see an improvement of this offense. The wide receiver room simply was not up to snuff. Jalen Hyatt is probably the pick. And I'm not saying Jalen Hyatt is a perfect prospect by any means. And that Tennessee offense, he ran a lot of stacks, which means he didn't have to – he didn't have to deal with a lot of press coverage. He didn't have to deal with a lot of physicality. And the way Tennessee's offense was designed was matching him up on nickelbacks, mat matching him up on safeties, and he was able to run right by those guys. And so I'm not saying he can't deal with the physicality of the NFL. I'm just saying there are some question marks about it. But I think Jalen Hyatt and his elite speed probably going to run a sub-4-3 at the combine, at least that's what I'm hearing, provides a spark to this Atlanta offense that they need. And I think he fits what he kind of balances out what the other pass catchers in that room are like. Pick 75, again, a lot of different things you could do. Whoo, Darnell Washington, one of my favorite prospects, um, staring me right in the face. This quarterback class is good. Like you have Cam Smith, Darius Rush, Clark Phillips, Jalen Jones, all guys that I really like. And I'm not a big fan of Cam Smith, but at 75, I start to become a little bit bigger of a fan of Cam Smith. He's a little bit handsy. But you, you'd rather have your cornerbacks be more physical than teach them to teach them to be less physical than teach them to be more physical. And you love the mentality. I mean, every time Cam Smith steps on the field, he thinks he's the best cornerback in the league. A lot of comparisons to J.C. Horn, the South, the South Carolina cornerback who came out two years ago. 
I don't think Cam Smith is quite the athlete that J.C. Horn ha- is, but he's a playmaker. He gets his hands on a lot of footballs. And him and Darius Rush were a phenomenal duo together. I think Cam Smith would be a nice get for the Falcons at 75, and it's it's almost more of a value pick. There are a lot of good cornerbacks in this class, and if the Falcons don't address that cornerback position in the top 10 or even in the top 50 with that second pick, I think they still will get a good cornerback at 75 or even maybe 110 or 113. Pick 110, I, I, I kind of want to look on the interior defensive line. I think there are some really good prospects that are probably going to be falling. Zach Pickens from South Carolina would be one of those guys that I like a lot. Um, former five-star coming into South Carolina. Took a little bit while. He, he's a fourth-year kid. The film is still not as consistent as you would like, but the flashes. like You see why he was a five-star coming, in, coming into South Carolina. He can be physically dominant. You just want to see a little bit more consistency from him, and I think that's why you're seeing him get pushed on these boards. Want to take a look at the linebacker class too and see if any of my favorite linebackers are still on the board. Not sure if they will be. <clears throat> Owen Popo, I, you know, we probably are going to get him. We're going to go get Cam, um, Zach Pickens first, who's a guy that I, I really do like Zach Pickens' game. I just think the consistency needs to be there a little bit. But when you're taking a guy in round four, you can bet on some upside. And Zach Pickens certainly has some upside. And then pick 113, Byron Young I really like too. I want to take a look at this linebacker group. And again, Owen Popo is going to fly. He, I don't think he'll be around in day three after the combine because this is a dude that might run in the four threes. He flies around. He's a little bit undersized, but he's kind of what you want in a modern linebacker because he can do it all. He's a phenomenal athlete in space. And him and Henry Toa Toa are both really good prospects. I'm just leaning Owen Popo, <coughs> excuse me, because he's just a superior athlete than Henry Toa Toa. Henry Toa Toa is probably more consistent linebacker but give me the traits, especially when you're getting into that day three range where you're not necessarily drafting guys who are going to come in and start year one. You want some guys who are going to provide value on special teams and be some depth pieces that can be developed into starters as they go on in their career. I think that would be Owen Popo, who again, probably would have gone out last year if he didn't struggle with injuries for so long. Now, 161, you're taking a look at what Atlanta needs, how they can improve their depth chart. I don't hate going back to taking a look at, at some of these edge rushers. There are some really good edge rushers who you can find uh, in late day three, especially betting on some traits. Ali Gay, Dylan Horton, two of my favorite guys. Dylan Horton, less, um, Dylan Horton, I think, has a very high floor. I think he'll be a solid football player at the next level. He has a phenomenal motor. He's good against the run. I think registered 35 hurries in 2022. The film was better than Ali Gay. Now, Ali Gay was good on this at the Senior Bowl, but the problem with him is the film in 2022 was not good. He has all the traits to be an elite pass rusher. He's 6'5", he's 275 pounds. He has extreme – he's not quite 275 pounds, but he's 6'5". He has really, really good length, and he uses those hands well. He's not good against the run. I think I think Ali Gay is a guy that you come in as a, as a third-down pass rush specialist, but you can have a lot of value for a team – you think about the most important metric as a defense in the NFL, it's third down defense. You got to get off the field and having a guy who can get quick pressure on the quarterback, I think has a lot of value. And I think Ali Gay is a guy that can do that. Again, you want to see some better play against the run, but in terms of a pass rush, I mean, he's probably maybe next to Brent Cox, probably the best pass rusher that is still available. And that has phenomenal, phenomenal traits. Former Juco guy that came into LSU inconsistent film, but I, th- I still think he can be really, really good at the next level. Now you got a little bit of a waiting game. You got 40 more picks. You got 226 and 247 left on the board. This is kind of where I want to hear from Atlanta fans. Like what position group would you be taking a look at to just add to some depth? And you're not getting starters in round seven, but you're getting guys who maybe can provide some value for your team. I want to take a look because I, I do. Well, both those guys aren't going. 226. I maybe take a look at like a safety, a late round safety. I do like Richie Grant. I think he can be good. He just needs some more time. No one that's really appealing to me. Maybe a cornerback spot. Cameron Mitchell's a guy that I like. Rajon Wright, he's got some length to him. And and that's something that I absolutely love in my cornerbacks. Um I would be considering that. And maybe we haven't really gone much like checking the offense. Wanya Morris, that's a lock. 
Wanya Morris was a he, he's got some really long arms. I think he's got potential to be a starter at the next level. And he again, that's a guy that the film necessarily wasn't as consistent as you would like, but the traits are there. And when you're picking around stuff, I feel like I'm a broken record, but get guys that you can coach up to be NFL starters in the future. Wanya Morris has all the chops of being a guy that can start in the NFL. And then I wouldn't mind taking a look at a running back, and we're, we're kind of we're kind of out of running backs that I really like. But I also think that's a position that you could take a look at. Tyler Algier was good. Maybe a running back that could kind of balance him out. Don't really see any guys that are available now. It's a really good running back class, though. And so if you are looking to add to the running back room, I think early day three, late day two would be a, a spot to target some really good running backs. It just I think Atlanta has some other positions I would like them to address than a running back, especially with, with a top 100 pick. Looking at this wide receiver position, Trey Tucker's a guy that's getting a lot of buzz. Um, n- nobody really standing out to me there. Maybe interior offensive line, Alex Forsyth. Nobody really. All right, let's let's go add some. And my one of my favorite things to do, especially when it gets so late, is Add to the linebacker group because these guys are going to be playing special teams. And Jeremy Banks, Isaiah Moore is another guy. Isaiah Moore, who 2020 film was really good. He battled injuries. Jeremy Banks is another guy that that I think can be Peyton Wilson I like as well. All really good guys, and I know him because I, I follow the high school recruiting. We're going to go Jeremy Banks to round this out. And, again, I think Jeremy Banks is a dude – that he needs to put on some weight. He's six foot two, six one, two hundred and twenty five pounds, but he flies around the field. I feel like he gets the position really well. I think that'd be kind of a nice stab here. Let's see how PFF grades this out. They don't like the Miles Murphy pick, and guess what? I don't care because Miles Murphy's a top ten prospect. Jalen Hyatt, I get the concerns about Jalen Hyatt. Cam Smith was a really good pick. A lot of C minuses. PFF not really rocking with the mock that much. I I liked I like these guys. We in one of my favorite parts about this, and, and you, you see it here, is a lot of value on guys who played Power 5 football at a high level. Clemson in the ACC, Tennessee, SEC, 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 Big 12, SEC. Like, we're hammering the Power 5 guys that have played against elite competition in the college football level. That's normally where I tend to evaluate my prospects and, and guys that I really like. I think this was a pretty solid draft. Again, I would like to hear this from the Atlanta fans. We appreciate the support you guys have shown again. If you do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. We appreciate you guys, and we'll talk to y'all later. Peace.